Did you know an indigenous Arawak woman from the West Indies was the first person to be tried at the Salem witch trials? Chachuba was an enslaved Locono Arawak woman that was captured in the 1670s in Venezuela. She was brought to work for someone named Samuel Thomas on the sugar plantations in Barbados. In the late 1670s, she was purchased by Samuel Paris. He went to Barbados to settle in a state after the death of his father. He brought Chachuba back home with him to Boston, where him and his family family was living. Shortly after, they relocated to Salem, Massachusetts after his business failed. He decided to become a minister in order to make more money. Reverend Samuel had a nine-year-old daughter named Betty and an 11-year-old niece named Abigail. Chachuba was put in charge of babysitting the girls. It is said in Western literature that Chachuba taught the girls witchcraft and that the girls shortly after became ill and began acting strange and claimed they were being attacked by by evil spirits. They also alleged that they heard voices and often went into convulsions. The girls were examined by doctors, but since they couldn't find anything wrong medically, they determined that the girls' symptoms was demon possession as a result of witchcraft. There is mention of fresh rye bread made by a neighbor that the girls ate. The exaggerated story says that the bread was made of urine and rye in order to heal the girls from demon possession. But the reality is that the girls ate bread that was contaminated with a fungus called Claviceps purpurea. This fungus grows on grains such as wheat and rye. It produces toxic alkaloids which results in a sickness called ergo poisoning when consumed by an animal or person. As the fungus grows, it replaces the kernels of the grain. These can mix into healthy grains during the harvest. They can also contaminate products a person would make with the grain, such as animal food or bread. The doctors at the time were unaware of this illness, hence the reason why they labeled it demon possession. Once the word got out, others in the community claimed to be suffering from the same symptoms. Reverend Samuel Paris and other members of his church decided that there must be witches that are doing witchcraft. They began to accuse anybody and everybody that seemed like a witch. The people that inhabited the town at the time were all Puritan people. The Puritans were wildly religious and very serious about getting down to the bottom of these crimes. Now, not so ironically, most of the people that were put on trial were enslaved indigenous people, middle-aged white women, and five men. The first accused, of course, was Chichuba not only because she was the caretaker of the girls, but also because she was one of very few black women in this town. And for that, she was considered to be an outsider. She was also accused of quote unquote voodoo simply because she was taken from foreign lands. The word voodoo is actually a derogatory Western term used by the British to describe various indigenous spiritual practices such as herbal healing, candle manifestation rituals, and ancestor veneration, amongst other things. Many have used it for evil, but it was never intended as such. Anyway, Chachuba was accused of baking a quote-unquote witch cake and cracking an egg yolk in a glass to see the girl's future. Both were considered witchcraft to the Puritan people who believe only God should be able to tell the future. Amongst the accused were not only Chachuba, but also some white neighbors, including Sarah Good, a mentally ill woman, and Sarah Osborne, an enemy of the Paris family. Both women quickly denied the charges, but Chachuba knew that since she was the only foreigner and woman of color, there would be no chance that they would believe her anyway. She knew she would be immediately condemned, so she saw this as an opportunity. She stood trial, confessed to the crimes, and told the court that she was possessed by the devil. She told long and descriptive tales about the devil and stated he was a tall white man in a long coat that threatened to kill her if she didn't harm the children. Her testimony stated the devil had minions working for him. She told the tale so well that everyone wanted to know more. She told them that two of the people working for the devil was Sarah Osborne and Sarah Good. Everyone believed her. They didn't think a slave could tell such a long thought out and descriptive lie. She also said that Sarah Good strong-armed her onto a pole and held her hostage on the pole as it floated in the air. This was the first reference of a flying witch. Both women were condemned and Chachuba got to keep her life since the court needed her to bring down the other quote-unquote witches. 
Chichuba willingly agreed, realizing that helping will actually spare her. This, of course, meant she had to name innocent people. They pushed for her to name the people that the devil revealed to her, but she testified that the devil hadn't let her see all the names yet. The more they forced, the more she made up false stories, stalling to keep her freedom and her life. The more they asked her for names, the more she testified that she hadn't yet seen the devil's book. It was clear she didn't want to implicate innocent people. Chachuba eventually told the court that she was now blind because the devil had took her sight. This, of course, caused the court to have to guess the identities of the remaining witches. They accused 150 people, most of which were women. When we look into the etymology of the word witch, it makes sense why it was mostly women. Women are the caretakers of the home. A witch is simply someone that recognizes the power that lies within them and they use that power to heal the world around them. And this is a threat to the egotistical European man. Of the 150 people, 19 innocent people were executed. Chichuba was put into prison for a year despite her being a cooperating witness. It is said she was bailed out by an unknown entity. There are no documents of Chichuba after her release and she was never to be seen again. Let me know in the comments what you would have done if you were in Chichuba's shoes.